Welcome to the Crypto Sphere. This is Cryptogenic coming at you. Today is Monday, January 28th. No, it's not. It's Friday, January 28th at 2 p.m. here in Northern California. We've got a lot to talk about in terms of where this crypto market is and where this crypto market might be going. I'm going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart. Uh, we want to kind of zoom out a little bit and take a look at a macro perspective and kind of follow up about something that I've been talking about early in the week. So without further ado, let's just jump right in to these charts. Taking a look at this weekly Bitcoin chart, I have identified the 50, 100, 200, and 300 week moving averages on this Bitcoin chart, what these moving averages basically do is they take the price, let's say this 300 week moving average, it simply takes the price of Bitcoin, averages it out over the last 30 weeks, and it basically creates a line. Whereas each of these candles demonstrates the price of Bitcoin over the last seven days. So these candles, this is seven days of Bitcoin's history. This line is 300 weeks of Bitcoin's history, and that's why these lines are longer and flatter. They're, they, you, know, you don't see big ups and downs like you do in candles. And so what these averages do is they kind of give us a sense of where Bitcoin has been and where Bitcoin is going if you average it out over a longer period of time. Now, what I identified with these lines of support here is basically this line is where the 100 week moving average is at current. This line is where the 200 week moving average is at current. And this line is where the 300 week moving average is at current. Now these lines are moving, but they're moving extremely slowly. But as the weeks go by, these lines will move higher. And as these lines move higher, we'll move these lines of support to follow these moving averages. Now, what we talked about a couple of days or earlier in the week was that whenever Bitcoin capitulates beneath the 50-week moving average, the 100-week moving average tends not to hold. Historically, if we break beneath this white line, we inevitably break beneath this blue line too. And on all but one occasion, this one here, the yellow line has held. The yellow line, which is the 200-week moving average, almost always holds. And even here, where the yellow line did not hold, you find that all we did was wick down to the 300-day, almost touched the three. I'm sorry, the 300-week, almost touched the 300-week moving average, and then immediately bounced back up towards the 200-week moving average. And so what we can say is a couple of things. Number one, Bitcoin will always revisit the 200-week EMA at some point. And number two, the 200-week moving average is strong support for Bitcoin historically. We may get a wick down to the 300-week at some point, but the 200-week is strong support. However, I am growing in confidence that the 100 week is going to hold this time. Now, I know I tend to be optimistic. I was talking to my good friend about this earlier this week, about how I tend to be overly optimistic about things in every area of my life. And he was talking to me about uh, multiple areas of my life in which I tend to be overly optimistic. I think optimism is a good thing, and optimism is also a dangerous thing. So please take note of the fact that I have acknowledged that I am optimistic to a fault. But what my optimism in the crypto space does for me is it allows me to live in peace because my hope is that it's always going to bounce back and then I find historical evidence for my optimism that even if we do come down to this 200-week EMA, it's going to bounce back and it's going to continue to move upward. However, I am not optimistic to the point at which I exchange reality for fantasy. 
In other words, that type of optimism is dangerous because then I would not even be cognizant of the possibility that we're coming down to touch this line here at 19,571. I must say to you that I am fully prepared for the possibility that we could be coming down to touch this line here at 19000 basically $20,000. I am prepared for the possibility that we might even come down and touch this line at $14,000. But I'm going to show you why I do not believe it is a high probability. So this is a very low probability. This is a low probability. It's kind of, honestly, I'd say 60% this is going to hold. 65% this is going to hold. But there's still that 35% chance that we could come down in the next six weeks, six to eight weeks, and visit this line here. Now, let me tell you where I find my hope. First of all, if we just look at this chart, we are still in an uptrend. Let me show you. Look at that. We still have higher lows and we still have higher highs. This pattern has become a bullish pattern. Now let me let me show you what happened here. Going back to early December, I noticed we were doing this, which is an ascending narrowing wedge. But we broke down bullish out of that ascending narrowing wedge. And at this point, looking at the candle pattern here, this is no longer an ascending narrowing wedge. It's somewhat of a consolidation pattern but it's more of a channel than anything else. It's just moving. It's, a, it's an uptrend, even though it's a slight uptrend, it's still channeling in the upward direction. Now, if we were to bounce here and move up, this would be the chart. We could come to retest the top of this trend line. Now, I talked to you about what gives me hope uh, the day before yesterday when I did my video, and the, my hope comes from the fact, the evidence for this comes from the fact that the place that we now stand in the crypto market is different than where we were a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. Because right now we are seeing institutional money come into the space. In 2021, we saw institutional money coming into the space like we had never seen before. And now we're seeing foreign governments buying up more and more Bitcoin than we've ever seen before. But when you've got juggernauts like Tesla and even like MicroStrategies holding 114,000 Bitcoin, um, what happens is institutional pressure is set in place at the support levels because these institutions, these institutional juggernauts, now have a vested interest and sing to it that Bitcoin does not drop beneath their cost basis. And so if that's the case, literally down here, we came right down basically to Tesla's cost basis for buying Bitcoin. And Tesla would have a vested interest in seeing to it that Bitcoin does not drop beneath that level. And then micro strategies would have a vested interest in seeing to it that Bitcoin doesn't drop beneath this level here at about $28,000. Now, between the two of them, do you think they could put enough money into Bitcoin to prevent it from dropping beneath those levels? And I would have to say yes, because I'd say between those two companies, they own about three quarters of 1% of all Bitcoin, which in actuality is pretty crazy. All right? So... 65.35, that's my probability. 65%, we're going to stay above the 100-week moving average. But there's still a 35% chance that despite MicroStrategies and Tesla's best, best attempts to prevent it from doing so, we'll crash beneath it and have some type of massive capitulation event 
and come down and test this $20,000 mark. That is my story. That is what I'm seeing. Uh, reviewing the XRP chart again, I'm still seeing uh, the 200-week and the 300-week EMA down at 48 and 41 cents, respectively. I think the 200-week will hold, but we shall see. I think if we come down to test the 200-week, the RSI will also come back and touch, test the bottom of this line. And this is the historic low in the RSI for uh, XRP of all time. Uh, looking at Bitcoin Cash, which I'm still incredibly bullish on, uh, we don't know where the 300-week EMA is simply because there's not enough data. The chart doesn't give us enough data. I mean, we barely, I mean, that 100-week EMA starts here. It's just because uh, Bitcoin Cash is relatively new compared to uh, many of these other assets. Bitcoin Cash is relatively new, and so we're not going to get a whole lot of data on the weekly chart, but my bottom for BCH is $207, at which point it would become intensely buyable. Looking at Theta Token, Theta Token is uh, it's broken down bearish out of this uh, bull pennant, which is very interesting. Uh, we do have a 200-week EMA here, and that means that the line of support is at $1.95 for Theta Token. Not guaranteeing that we're going down to these lines. I'm simply projecting that these are the bottoms, as I can see. Haven't looked at the XLM chart for a moment, but we also have broken down bearish out of a symmetric triangle. I see the lines of support at $0.13 cents and $0.10. Cents. We've also broken down bearish in the RSI, of course, just like basically everything has. And so what we can see is that the basic line of support is about there. And uh, yeah, that's about where the support is in the RSI. And so if we get a break down to that level in the RSI, we may get a break on the price down to 13 cents. And uh, if we break beneath that level, well, that's kind of the historic low. There's not much lower that we have to go in the RSI for... XLM, but um, this is the support range, and if we break down to that range, we'll probably break down to this price range here. Matic, haven't looked at Matic for a minute. Um, I would say of all the charts I've looked at so far, of all the altcoin charts that I've looked at, Matic is the least bearish, and in actuality, uh, what we can actually do is... Uh, redraw this line and see that we're still making a strongly higher low. And so, um, yeah, Matic is still high. Even here, we're making a higher low. Now, we're making lower lows in the RSI and higher lows in the price action. And that, my friends, is hidden, bear, hidden bullish diversions. So what we can actually do is just kind of redraw this trend line because we can see what the actual trend is right now. And that's all we're doing is, is a, really a broadening, a broadening wedge here. Uh, MACDs are bearish, but we've got a nice broadening wedge here. Uh, looking at Rune, same type of deal. Um, let's see, do we still have a higher low here? Yep, we still got a slightly higher low here, which actually makes this more of a bull flag. Well, not quite because we've got higher lows in the in the price. I'm sorry, we got lower we got lower highs in the price and slightly higher lows, so it's still somewhat of a bull pennant. Um, but we'll just have to watch this and see what we do. Uh, we're down at a historic low in the RSI. Once again, we've got a broadening wedge here in the RSI. Uh, 
Um, Chili's, same type of deal here. Coming to this line. Looks like we got a slightly lower low in the price and a broadening wedge in the RSI. So what this means when you see, you know, lower lows in the RSI, lower lows in the price is that it's it's extremely volatile at the moment. I mean, it could go up to touch to retest the top of this line, it could break down back down to the line, it could break beneath the line, it could come up to touch the top of the RSI, but then it could come all the way down. And so basically um, this is a volatile space for this asset, and we just got to watch and see where it goes. But when we look at the crypto market, like this is the altcoin market, it looks exactly like Bitcoin. It looks exactly like Bitcoin. I mean, if we look at this Bitcoin chart and we look at this altcoin market chart, it looks almost the same in terms of the, the candle pattern that it's making. Um but we've got higher lows and we've got higher highs. It's still, in a sense, an uptrend. I mean, it's a micro downtrend within it, but it's still an uptrend. But we've got lower lows in the RSI, higher lows in the price. That's hidden bullish divergence. So we're seeing the same thing on the total crypto market cap chart. Higher lows, higher highs. When you have higher lows and higher highs, is that an uptrend or a downtrend? And so, you know, the fact that we're on the heels of a downtrend here in the micro has, we have not yet invalidated the uptrend on the macro. And so, I'm not worried yet, folks. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We could be bearish for some time. We're definitely going to be volatile for some time. But all is well, folks. Just remember that this is not financial advice. I'm neither telling you to buy nor sell nor hold, nor refrain from buying, nor refrain from selling, nor refrain from holding. I'm simply giving you some data points and some observations. You can use your own adult brain and make your own adult decisions. But I want to thank you so much for watching and uh, want to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Uh, it's a big help to me if you do, if you hit that like button. Subscribe and leave me a comment. It's a big help to me. It makes my channel more visible uh, to other people. And I deeply appreciate those of you who have done so and continue to do so on a regular basis. want to thank all of the members of my Patreon for making this possible for me to make these videos. If you're thinking about joining my Patreon, I'd like to invite you to wait until February 1st. Because if you join before the 1st, they're going to charge you today and then they're going to charge you again on the 1st. And you're going to be mad as a mofo when you see that you've been charged twice in about three or four days. So hold on to the first, and I'll give you some more information about what you get if you join my Patreon. Uh, what I'll do for you, what it will do for you. Uh, but I want to thank you once again for watching. And everything that I do here is designed to empower you, to provide you with the resources you need, to sleep in peace every night, to wake in joy every morning, and to walk in love every day. And I pray that you do just that. And with that being said, this is Cryptogenic signing out. Mm -hmm.